Good evening. Welcome, everybody, to this meeting of the Window Board of Commissioners. Calling the meeting to order. Thank you for being here. I love it when I look out and see a big crowd of folks. Um, tonight, Police Chief Bill Carter is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our invocation tonight is from Pastor Bob Albrighton from the Window United Methodist Church. Good evening, and thank you for being here with us. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to be here from Window United Methodist Church. Uh, we'd like to say that we have a spaghetti dinner, all you can eat on Friday night if anybody that's hungry. And we've also been very involved in going down to Principal and Tarboro doing some cleaning out, and also now we're starting the rebuilding down there after the hurricane. And we've also been working pretty hard to get a Habitat House in East Wake, and that's probably going to happen probably in 2018. So we're excited to be part of this community and glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. all that you do. Thank you. And I would like to say that I'm an American Baptist person <laughs> pastoring a United Methodist Church, and I'm going to give a Presbyterian prayer. All right. Well, let's hear it. So let us pray. <clears throat> God of heaven and earth, in your word, you have given us a vision of that holy city to which the nations of the world bring their glory. Look upon and visit the cities and the towns of the earth, and especially the town of Wendell. Renew the ties of mutual regard that form our civic life. Make us honest and able leaders. Help us, Lord, to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression that peace may prevail with righteousness and justice with order, and that men and women from various cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. O oh Lord, we pray, let it be so. Amen. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Public comment period. No one signed up for public comment. Got a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Item number four is a presentation by a representative of the Government Finance Officers Association for the Town of Wendell Finance Department being awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Good evening. Thank good you for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Town Board of Commissioners, Town Administration, and citizens of the Town of Wendell. My name is Jeff McCauley, and I'm the President of the North Carolina Government Finance Officers Association, and I'm delighted and honored to be here tonight on behalf of the Government Finance Officers Association to present the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting to the Town of Wendell. The purpose of this program is to encourage and assist governments in preparing financial reports of the highest quality for the benefit of its citizens and other parties with a vital interest in the government's finances. During the more than 70 years the program has operated, it has gained widespread recognition as a premier indicator for excellence in governmental accounting and financial reporting. To earn the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting, the town of Wendell had to complete a 48-page, that's right, a 48-page checklist substantially conform to the program's strenuous criteria, which go well beyond the minimum requirements of generally accepted accounting principles, and have its financial report separately reviewed by three independent reviewers. Today's presentation marks the first year the town of Wendell has received this award. So the town of Wendell is number one on its inaugural flight, and I'm sure there will be many more to come. 
Such an accomplishment reflects the professionalism and commitment of the town manager, Teresa Piner, the finance director, Butch K. Butch, if you'll stand. The finance department staff, the ones who really do the heavy lifting, Malia Edwards, <clears throat> Garrett Johnson, the young architect and also an NC State graduate, I found out, but <laughs> and Elizabeth Jones, uh, who actually takes care of all the receivables for the town of Wendell as well, and also took numerous other individuals as well as many hours of hard work. It also reflects a high degree of dedication and leadership on the part of the town of Wendell's mayor and the board of commissioners. There are approximately 90,000 governmental units in the United States, and only 5% obtain this pinnacle in financial reporting. Accordingly, the Government Finance Officers Association hopes that this award presented to the town of Wendell will serve as an example and encourage others to strive for these same high standards in preparing their own financial reports. Butch, if you'll please come forward. Therefore, it is my privilege on behalf of the Government Finance Officers Association to present the Town of Wendell's Financial Director, Butch K, this Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Congratulations, Butch, and a job well done. much. Congratulations, Butch, Garrett, Malia, Elizabeth. We're real proud of y'all. Thank you. Y'all really representing Wendell well. Make us proud. Thank you. Item number 5A, the public hearing for acceptance of bank loan proposal contingent upon the local government commission's approval, which we just received. <laughs> so, uh, I think Mr. K. Is that you? Okay. Madam Mayor, members of the board, uh, today we received our um, bid results from the um, loan that we're applying for with the Local Government Commission. Um, we had two that submitted today, uh, KS Bank and BB&T, and BB&T appears to be the lowest bidder at 2.4% overall for a 10-year loan. And so we were uh, opening this up for, I guess, uh, public comment in case there's anyone that needs to speak for or against this uh, mayor. Okay. Public hearing is now open. If anyone wishes to speak for or against the, uh, this issue, step forward. All right, seeing none, public hearing is closed. Uh, do any of y'all have any questions for Mr. K? Okay. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the um, acceptance of the bank loan proposal contingent upon the LGC approval. Okay. We have a motion to approve the resolution. Is that what you want to do? Motion to approve the yes. resolution for financing terms. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 5B, public hearing on the zoning map amendment to rezone 12.7 acres of land located on industrial drive from manufacturing industrial to residential agricultural. Mr. Bergmark. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, as stated, uh, this public hearing is being uh, held, or the board's being asked to hold a public hearing on a rezoning request for about 12 acres off of industrial drive. Uh, there is a ordinance that is attached to your material that could be adopted if you were prepared to do so. Uh, the applicant in this case, Gregory Hopkins, has asked for the request. Um, again, to, uh, the rezoning would be from manufacturing industrial to residential agricultural RA. This property was previously part of a larger area that was zoned manufacturing industrial uh, due to its proximity to the railroad and access to sewer. Uh, however, all the surrounding properties that were uh, in general larger than this one uh, that had been part of that zone had been previously rezoned away from that, left, leaving this kind of the sole manufacturing industrial piece in this area. 
Uh, the applicant has stated their desire to rezone the property uh, in order to build uh, a home for himself on this tract. At, um, according to our regulations, residential uses are not permitted within the existing zoning, which is M and I. It's not currently located in the corporate limits. Uh, it doesn't have any structures. It's, it's a vacant tract. Um, it is encumbered by a protected stream buffer located on the site. Uh, it does have road frontage along Industrial Drive, and it's actually split by, uh, or it has railroad right-of-way frontage along its northern border. Um, there is a transportation plan, long-range transportation plan does call for right-of-way reservation um, for a future road, um, but not dedication along the western boundary of this property as well. As stated, he's looking to make this change in order to build a house on the property. Uh, you have a copy of the uses that are allowed in both the current zoning, M and I, as well as the requested uh, zoning designation, RA, included as attachments A for your reference if you want to look through those. Uh, on your screen, you'll see the area in question highlighted in, in red. Uh, you can see that uh, it backs up to the railroad. The, join, the adjacent properties are all of residential designation. They're either zoned RA, which is the request for this as well, or there's property um, zoned R3, which is a medium density residential zoning to the south as well. Anytime we do a rezoning, we look at the comprehensive plan. What does it say? What is the long range vision for this area? Uh, our comprehensive plan breaks up our entire zoning de uh, jurisdiction into areas of less intense versus more intense development patterns. This area is uh, specified as being the S2 reserved open space area and stating that these areas which are legally developable, developable, however, they are areas that based on environmental or an urban service factors should be lightly developed or undeveloped, remaining in a rural or natural state. Um, the planning board heard this request at their last meeting. They did vote seven to zero in favor of the requested zoning map amendment. Uh, and they included a statement of consistency within that recommendation. Uh, finding it to be consistent with the comprehensive plans uh, designation under the and the uses allowed in the S2 sector and reasonable due to the surrounding zoning districts and as well as the presence of uh, protected waters within the property. Staff does recommend approval of this rezoning request. And I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Robart? Public hearing is now open. If anyone wishes to speak for or against the rezoning, step forward. Okay. Seeing none, public hearing is now closed. Do you have any questions? Any further questions? Or what's your pleasure? Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, do we approve the zoning request to rezone um, the 12.07 acres from MI to res residential agriculture? Okay, we have a um, <coughs> motion to approve the zoning request. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Item 5C is a public hearing on proposed amendments to chapters 2, 3, 10, and 19 of the UDO. Uh, as they relate to outdoor and indoor event venues. Mark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is essentially a collection of text amendments that was initiated first by an applicant who is interested in doing a uh, outdoor wedding and event venue. And as we looked at how to make that possible in our code, it kind of brought up some other areas that we needed to address. So you'll see in your report there's we have a number of Amendment 1, Amendment 2, Amendment 3. But the First Amendment is essentially what the applicant, Joshua Furr, is, is requesting. Um, and I, I point that out uh, partly just to explain and also to state that if there was any concerns over some of those Amendment 2, 3, 4, that wasn't really the applicant's request uh, specifically, uh, the board could choose to take action on uh, the first item without and still discuss the others in more detail if needed. Uh, so, as I just said, Joshua Furr is the one that's applied for the zoning text amendment. Uh, he's recently purchased property at 1408 Marshburn Road for the purpose of establishing an outdoor wedding and event venue. Uh, however, right now we don't really have a use in our use table that addresses that well. Uh, the closest things we have are outdoor recreational facilities and meeting facilities, but uh, their definitions and standards don't really work well for this type of, of venue being described. 
Uh, as a result, he asked uh, Mr. Perras for staff's help in developing a use category and some standards for this proposed business. As we look through uh, how other towns um, handle these types of uses uh, and, and how different venues can kind of differ from each other, uh, we realize that there are some other associated uses such as uh, live performance theaters or sports arenas or meeting facilities that might need to be addressed, uh, partly just to add it in to our code so that others don't have to go through the same process necessarily. Also, to differentiate, you know, when you start to define a use, you ask, well, would this be fall into that category? And so if we want to say that no, a, a sports arena like Mudcats definitely needs to be its own type of use. So we want to go ahead and try to address that now. Uh, we did look at the standards of Raleigh, Wake Forest, uh, Fuquay, Verena, Garner, Clayton, and Nightdale uh, and when developing these, these regulations. And, and many of the associated standards that would go into Chapter 3 uh, were pulled from some of their uh, standards that we found. Um, so the use that we're creating specific to uh, Mr. Furr's request, we're determining uh, event venue outdoor or outdoor event venue, uh, proposing that it be allowed with a special use permit in the RA, NC, CMX, CC, DMX, CH, M&I, and TND zoning districts. Um, so essentially your, your gambit of commercial districts uh, as well as your, your kind of more rural agricultural districts as well. Um, and we're proposing certain standards to go along with that use in Chapter 3 uh, to kind of guide that special use proceedings. Um, as I mentioned, when looking through everyone else's standards, especially for wedding venues, we realized that uh, it was hard to create a one rule fits all, all situation. You have some of these that are on 30 acre tracks in the middle of nowhere. You have some that are tucked right in the middle on a half acre, acre lot in a historic district in downtown Raleigh. And so, uh, what fits one may not fit another. That's part of the reason why we're recommending a special use permit proceeding so that you can kind of evaluate them on a case-by-case -case basis and determine what the appropriate standards are uh, or what appropriate conditions are as part of that proceeding. So uh, we added changes to a number of chapters. Uh, 19 is the definition chapter, so we did add a, a, a definition for outdoor event venue kind of listing the different things such as weddings, reunions, conferences, festivals, and so forth that could fall under this. Um, and did specify that an, a, a live theater or performance theater would really be its own category if that was its primary uh, focus. We also uh, would be adding it into our use table in the districts I, I previously uh, went through. And then finally, we'd be adding a number of standards to it, um, specifying that a special use permit is required. Uh, specifying that you know traffic generated from the site uh, wouldn't create unsafe or inefficient parking, loading, or vehicle or pedestrian circulation patterns, essentially saying that you're not creating a traffic problem uh, through this use, and you'd be evaluating that, uh, that uh, excuse me, evaluating that as part of the special use proceedings. That the nearby properties have to be protected from sound amplification and amplification and lighting. Um, we leave some leeway as part of the special use permit, of course but we're in general kind of trying to set a baseline standard of saying that you know at at 11 p.m. any kind of amplified noise activity uh, or music um, shouldn't be audible beyond the boundary and again you could kind of vary that depending on where this is on a case-by-case -case basis um, the buffer should be provided again that the type of buffer you determine based on where it is as part of the special use hearing um, and, uh, and finally, that as part of the special use proceeding and consideration could be given to the inclusion of non-paved parking facilities for the venues that are located in a more rural setting. Uh, this is something that may not be appropriate in, in some areas, but again, if you're on a large tract in a very rural area and it's something that's meant to accommodate 300 people, having a really huge paved parking lot might kind of take away from the, the type of uh, atmosphere you're trying to create. So we at least wanted to leave that door open to be considered as part of the special use hearing. Uh, the planning board, uh, when they reviewed this, went one step further and they asked for bicycle parking facilities to be considered the same in the same manner as whether or not it was really needed at a, at a given site or not. Uh, but that is that language was pulled into the the or draft ordinance based on the planning board's uh, recommendation. Uh, and finally, we are, we are amending. This is the only change to Chapter 10 is to amend the parking table that says how many parking spaces you need for each kind of use category. We'd be creating a new meeting facilities event venue category with a standard of one uh, parking space per four seats. And in general, unless they're exempted out of it um, through the special use proceeding, one bicycle parking space per 20 automobile spaces. 
and that the number of parking spaces for this is consistent with other type of assembly uses like churches and the like. Uh, I guess I'll ask procedurally, do you want me to go through all of them or do you want me to stop at between each one of these if, to see if there's any questions? It's up to y'all. Do you want to go one at a time and then ask questions? That's fine. Just do that. Um, stop and ask questions at each one? or I, do, I would. Okay. That well, that's, that's, uh, so that's it for the outdoor event venue. Do y'all have any questions about that? I, I kind of have a question about the sound, the mm -hmm. traveling of the sound. <clears throat> mm -hmm. How is that going to be managed um, I know after 11, but what about before 11? What can you hear beyond the property line before 11? So right now, unless it's we could specify certain decibel levels as part of a special use proceeding. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that set standard already set up as part of this, mm -hmm. uh, but that definitely could be reviewed. There were a couple of communities that had, um, so some communities were like ours, they had a noise ordinance, but it didn't necessarily have a specific decibel level that couldn't be surpassed. Right. Other communities, I think Raleigh and Wake Forest did have a specific, I don't know, like, you know, 65, 75 decibels. Mm -hmm. Um, that were set, you know, across the board. Mm -hmm. But we could definitely, as part of the special use proceeding, kind of set a standard that we didn't want to go past. Okay. So that's something we can manage mm -hmm. down the road. So we will take care of that then. Mm -hmm. okay. Are there any other questions? Would yeah. the 11 p.m., did that coincide with the other towns you looked at? Clay yes. And Pequay? Yes, that was pretty standard. Okay. Do you have a question? Is the applicant present? He is. Do you have any issues with us hearing a little bit about the vision and where this came from? Um, maybe he can talk about that when we start the public hearing and speak on his behalf. I'm sure he'll want to say some words, so yeah, it'll be. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. All right, so if there's no, are there no other questions from the board? <coughs> okay. Public hearing. Can you, can you uh, wait just one minute, let me get the public hearing open, and then you can come up in just a moment, okay? Okay. So the public hearing is now open. If anyone has any questions or would like to say anything for or against this, they're welcome to come forward and have a turn. So you can come now, and the applicant can come, whoever would like to, in whatever order you'd like. Uh, can you come up here to the podium, please, ma'am, so we can hear you? Tell us uh, your name and address, please. Mary Moser, 1601 Marshland Road. Thank you. I have a question. It says 11 p.m. would be the point in time at which the electronic or amplified music would need to be stopped. Do I understand correctly the way that it's being proposed? That, that's my understanding. Mr. Bergmark, can you... Hey. Uh, essentially, yes. I mean, the way it reads, it says it can't be heard beyond the property boundary. Uh, but if it's amplified, it's going to carry beyond the property boundary. So the intent is that, yes, it cuts off. But I think, I think if you couldn't hear it standing at the property boundary, you'd probably be okay with that. So. Uh, my concern is that if someone is a neighbor to me on Marshburn Road and they have the opportunity to have an outdoor venue, that means that every night... I get to be serenaded until 11 o'clock with music that is not of my choice. And one of the things that, as a homeowner, you know, we have a deed, and there are parts to the deed, the bundle of rights that goes along with the deed, not just the land. And there's seven bundle of rights, and I'd like to just call your attention to one, and that is the owner is entitled to the quiet enjoyment of his property. My concern is that 11 o'clock is way too late for families. It certainly, from a personal level, would be way too late for me. And I want to bring that to your attention. Um, I don't, also don't know, when we get ready to sell our home, what a future purchaser would consider to be too late. And I would prefer not to add a risk of a factor that might reduce my selling pool at that point in time or cause me to get a lower value because someone finds the music to be noise. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Hello, Your name board. And address, please. 
My name is Joshua Furr. Um, I own 1408 Marshburn Road. Um, came across this property about two years ago from a couple, Irene and Euless May, who I'm a trustee for, for um, a 23 acre piece they own in Raleigh um, named the Maymac Nursery um, that was very successful for 20, 30 years. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the name. Um, so it wasn't a property that I sought out to start this vision, even though before that, um, after getting married at the Sutherland, um, which is towards Wake Forest, um, it was such an amazing experience. Um, and I was so involved with that whole process of a year and a half of preparing, which, you know, that, that can be tough within itself, um, really got interested in the whole concept. Um, I have experience of 10 years in the restaurant hotel management, and I have 16 years of experience in um, residential real estate. Um, so my vision for this property is very similar to a, a top-notch, high-class venue that um, would bring multiple options for the city to use. When I first met, um, when I met Patrick and David, I really was just going to get um, permission to put up the big long white fence you all, you all see probably going up and down Marshburn with the, um, the lanterns on top. And then um, little bit by little bit, um, I fell in love with the property more and more and more. And everyone I had over, a um, few small family g gathering, uh, company parties, everyone was saying this was perfect and reminded them of this venue or that venue. So um, the noise or ordinance or the noise um, uh, question or concern. Uh, this property is a very large property. It's 4,200 square feet sitting on 10 acres. Well, I'm actually closing um, on the uh, 26th of this month uh, with on the 23 acres adjacent to it. So um, the boundaries um, on that side should be well protected um, and hopefully we're going to get that piece annexed in over time um, if that works out. But um, as far as the time it is very crucial that the 11 o'clock um, stay um, be considered because without that across the board, that's really how people book their weddings and how the bands and um, everything sort of uh, schedule everything. So it's really based around that time. Um, if that time was um, altered to be even an hour earlier, it would really be devastating for the whole venue concept. Um, but I have a, um, a great team forming, um, and a lot of them that hopefully you'll meet are local Wendell um, uh, homeowners and citizens. So um, I'm trying to keep, you know, bring something to the town that is positive and not just wedding venues, but if there is a Easter gathering or a um, Halloween event or something the town can use, I'm all um, ears. Um, I won't be living there anytime soon. Um, we have a young son, and we, you know, my wife wants to be a little bit closer into Raleigh where we grew up. So, um, but I've fallen in love with the property, love the town and the people. So, um, whatever I can do to convince you that it will be top notch, please ask any questions. Um, I'm here for that. What's your vision for the <clears throat> adjacent piece of property you're trying to close on? So my vision, because being in real estate for 16 years and watching the area change drastically, especially where I originally started in North Hills and still own a few homes there, Kane has totally changed um, that whole area to be named Midtown. Um, but the property beside it, I really, the first, um, I sought out the current property owner because I was really worried about exactly what um, this um, lady was concerned about noise and um, privacy because I um, I have a pond there I've invested my life savings with this property and still going because I want to keep all of that undeveloped and yes I mean I was you know maybe down the road some of the property owners that are around the, the, um, the piece the two pieces I know that you know during the last uh, meeting that there are some big plans for uh, construction there that um, one side of Marshburn is getting developed and it's been passed last time I was here and then the same broker um, agents are considering the other side so 
the growth is happening. I don't, I don't want to develop on that 23 acre piece. I'd love to put um, a beautiful barn, pasture with horses. Um, you know, I want to add an outdoor pavilion, outdoor um, bathrooms. I want to do a, um, a, a separate drive going into the woods um, so there's plenty of room and quiet. So, um, you know, that's my, my, my vision with the other property, not to develop it right now for um, income producing properties, just for this, this, this concept that we're presenting to you today. So, is there a structure currently on the property? So the house, and then we have a carport there, which um, has electricity and, and water, but the vision is to build an outdoor pavilion, um, to have an outdoor um, handicap accessible um, building for everyone to use that as well and um, and then just making sure everything is you know a dock on the the pond parking so but that is it it would just be, just be that for right now it's the house and the large five car carport which will be probably torn down and that's where the bathroom facility will go okay. so there's no way you could bring the event inside to reduce the noise at an earlier um, time. well when you're when you're work that's the whole point of this venue is to be outdoors the property has been landscaped by a sister of the the maze who that's what they live for they live for landscaping and beauty and um, that's what it has and that's the reason why someone would book the property in the first place not really to be inside yes you want to have a pavilion or a, rent, a tent rental but the thing is they want to have that outdoor feeling well I'll tell you the only experience I have with these things, and I've, I've been to them. I have a close friend who owns one, and every weekend last year was rented out for a wedding. So, yeah. so they are very popular. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to side with the homeowner because I would hate to know that every weekend I was bothered by music yeah. at 11 p.m. Well, I think it would benefit your, that. You know what? I respect your um, your opinion, and you know I can understand that just know that what I'm doing what I'm at requesting is in the best um, I believe interest of um, of Wendell and I I really didn't plan this concept in my you know over a long period of time but the two years I have been involved every single day and just researching all the different venues and how much positive um, um, feedback and that other cities and communities have. I think this town needs it. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I would just like to point out to, to everyone here that what we're discussing tonight is not approval um, or lack thereof of your specific project, mm -hmm. but we're discussing putting a framework in which we can approve or deny such requests because Down the road. as it stands right now we don't have a classification right. for outdoor venues mm -hmm. um, without a, without any way to classify it we have no way to approve or deny yours and so I would like to remind uh, yourself and everyone tonight that okay. us what we're talking about here is not specifically your property Got what it. we're talking about is a process uh, to put in place for a special use permit so that, you know, um, the property owner in question who's requesting special use permit can be heard um, and talk about their plan. We can hear from surrounding property owners, take a look at the site and things like that. Um, and I think that's great. I, I think uh, we need a process uh, to hear this sort of thing out um, because right now we don't have one. Um, I, but I would like to... I would like to just pull this back a little bit because sure. we're, we're getting into the minutia of your of your project when we're talking yeah. about when we're talking about a process overall. And so I, I would like to remind everyone that that's what we're talking about is, is the process Thank and you. not specifically your your project. I'm new to this, so I appreciate that it, it, explanation. It's no problem, and, yeah. and um, I just want to make sure everyone understood that this is not the the end of you know this is this is government. Sure, understood. This is going to drag on for much, much longer. We just got started. Understood. Just getting started, that's right. I'm here for the long haul. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Are thank there you. any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank Would you. anyone else like to speak? <clears throat> okay. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, gentlemen. Mary, the 
question. Uh, no. Chief, what's our, Chief Carter, what's <coughs> our, uh, our current, I know the mayor can quote it, um, noise ordinance? Eleven. The current noise ordinance? Definitely. Is ele eleven. Eleven. Six to eleven. Six to eleven. The, the current enforcement of our noise ordinance? It's 6 a.m. to 11 for, I know that's true at least for certain. For construction at least. Yeah, for certain activities, for sure. Um, right, right, so for the, the piece that I was going to point out here is that by putting this process in place, we'll actually give the concerned homeowners greater protection because they're going to have to go through a special use permit process for each event. So every time the, the event process would come back, we would see it again. And obviously, you'd know if this is working or if it's not, uh, based on my understanding of the current. Uh, I don't think they'd have to do it every time there's an event. No. He would just get special use permit for his business. For the venue, not for, for venue. every, not for every event. Yeah. And, and at that time, we would determine noise levels and, and things like that, not to exceed six to eleven at night. And but, but it, well, I guess my my argument was that I could. If I own that piece of property, I could play music until 11 o'clock every single night, and I would have to cut it off at 11, so it wasn't... Whether it was an event venue or whether not. Whether it was an event venue or not. Yeah, um, yeah. So this, that's how it's currently enforced, is my understanding. Yeah. What, um, Ms. Burmar, what process is in place, um, or would be in place, or if a venue, not specifically this one, but any venue or any, you know, any place that um, that was making noise or whatever, if they continually ran over whatever time it was that they were allotted to to have music, if they continually, um, you know, ran over, is there any process in place to to revoke operating permits? I, and I understand this is a little bit different because this isn't in this isn't in the Wendell City Limits is an EPJ, correct? correct? So what process would there be in place to make sure that the rules that are agreed to, of 11 p.m., 10 p.m., 9 p.m. cutoff, whatever it may be, um, are adhered to? Yeah, I mean, uh, anytime we're doing a special use, there's certain conditions of an approval. Well, maybe not anytime, but for this case, there certainly would be. So if one of those conditions related to noise and we're spelling out time limits, decibels, whatever it may be, if they're exceeding those, there would be grounds for revoking the special use permit that grants them the ability to have that use. Okay, so if, if they were to agree to 11 p.m. or 10 or, or whatever it may be, if they start running over or disregarding those rules, we could revoke the special use permit um, if it became a nuisance. Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure. Any other comments, questions? So we hadn't set decibel levels in this, in these yeah. amendments, right? You no, no, it would be during. Not within the text amendment, yeah. but you could, as part of the special yeah. use hearing, you're, that's when you're going to set your conditions. These are really just trying to give you all, as the board, some guidelines, kind of a baseline to start from. Okay. You could you could scrap one of them. You could you could amend it to be a different time, a different amount. You could decide on this one you want a type A buffer on this one, and just a small buffer is fine. So you'll be setting all those as each special use hearing comes up before you. I would make a motion to approve the proposed change uh, text amendments to chapters 2, 3, 10, and 19 of DDO as it relates to outdoor and, and indoor event, uh, venues. Can I make a suggestion before you go further on that? Please. Yeah. In my experience, once you have these conditions, uh, it's difficult to impose additional conditions as a part of the special use process. So just looking at this uh, item 3C for event venues outdoor, Mm -hmm. Trying to see how we might make that more flexible in the permitting process so that if factors presented themselves during the hearing, the board would have the ability to impose different hours or different decibel levels 
based on factors that, that come up, like proximity of residential use to the event venue, that sort of thing. Right. And I'm afraid the way it's worded, you, the, the nature of these hearings is, is just such that boards are typically hand-tied to, to do much by way of conditions. So I was going to suggest in item C, after the, in that second line, after the word otherwise, uh, have that sentence read, unless otherwise imposed based on factors presented at the hearing as a condition of the special use permit approval, any music or amplified noise activity shall not be audible beyond the property, boundary of the property after 11 p.m. The point being that trying to, to allow the board some flexibility as a part of that hearing process to impose different conditions if you deem them to be warranted. Do we do we need to, by that extension, do we need to reference the the board may set decibel limits? Because right now that's not referenced in that. It just talks about a time. I, th I think that that would be a good idea. Yes. Okay. I think that sort of latitude, it may be getting in the minutia, but it sounds like you may want that kind of flexibility based upon these uses. Mm -hmm. Where would that language be inserted? About you could add it at, at the end of that sentence. In addition to time uh, periods, the board may impose uh, noise level limitations. motion to reflect these changes. Yes, I'll amend the motion based on the following changes recommended by our attorney. Okay. okay, so we have a motion to adopt the ordinance to amend chapters 2, 3, 10, and 19. Uh, question, Mayor. Yes. The ordinance actually relates to all of them, amendments 1 through 5. We've mm -hmm. just discussed amendment 1. Um, You're right. It's confusing. So we could just have a consensus of the board and then make one motion on the entire okay. ordinance at All the right. end. Right, right, right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, yeah, if there's no other uh, questions of the board, I'll move on to Amendment 2, which is the, excuse me, mm. which is the live theater uh, or live performance okay. theater outdoor. <laughs> Very good. Um, these will go through a little bit quicker than the first one did. Um, so for this one, we're looking to add a new use, a theater live performance outdoor. We're adding a definition for it in Chapter 19, as well as uh, stating that it would be uh, permitted with additional standards in the CMX uh, Community Center CC CH, which is um, Highway Commercial and Manufacturing Industrial Districts, and listing that it would be permitted with a special use permit in the DMX and the TND districts. Uh, we do have some standards that go along with this that it would be uh, buffered with a type A buffer, uh, as specified in Chapter 8, that there'd be a 200-foot uh, separation from adjacent any adjacent residential zone properties and, um, from where the performance or audience area was for this, um, that the primary access uh, be along a collector or higher road to make sure that this isn't something that's on a, you know, a local uh, residential street, um, and that, again, have a similar language that talks about noise activity not being audible beyond the boundaries of the property after 11 p.m. Um, and those are all the standards for the outdoor theater use. You have to take any questions. No, any questions? Uh, I, I have one. Um, 2A, where it says permitted with additional standards. Going back to my earlier question that a special use permit could be revoked um, if, if it's um, permitted with additional standards, um, you know, in manufacturing, industrial, and, you know, commercial highway and all that other, mm -hmm. would we still have the same latitude to basically pull that permit if it's not a special use permit, um, if it was allowed basically by right? I believe the answer is 
not being able to revoke their ability to conduct business, we would definitely be able to find them. Um, either, uh, definitely a zoning violation penalties if this is a, a standard listed in the UDO. Um, and if it, if it was also in violation of, of a, just our general noise ordinance, then they could possibly be otherwise fined, or I don't know if this is something that could be considered a misdemeanor, or some items in the code of ordinances you know, can be um, treated that way as well. But I don't know that we could just outright uh, revoke the, you know, we don't have privilege licenses anymore for businesses. Um, no, we don't. <laughs> so that, at least that's my understanding. And, and that was my question, is because we don't have privilege licenses, that special use permit was for an amendment, you know, under Amendment 1 or, um, or in 2 Part B, if it's permitted with a special use permit, then we have the opportunity to pull that special use permit. But if they don't have a special use permit, then we don't. So they would just be subject to regular noise ordinance that may be fined under whatever the... And if, is that right? Is that what I understand there? Correct. I mean, and, and if that was a, a concern of the board, I mean, you could consider, again, this is just our proposal on what, how it would be permitted. Um, you could make it special use permit across the board if that was the board desire as well, rather than permitted with additional standards in certain districts. Um, I, again, on this, I kind of just followed other jurisdictions' leads, and a lot of them were allowing them with permitted with standards. Um, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't have that extra step of looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis like we do with the outdoor event venue. I, I don't really have a problem with out outdoor venues um, when the, and the, uh, the sort of traffic and, and issues that they bring, um, looking at every single one of them as a special use permit. I don't, it's not like a house where we're going to get to a week. Um, I don't think it's going to overburden this board to, to consider a special use permit for an outdoor music venue. Um, and and as the attorney was stating, um, it, it's it would be hard for us to impose additional standards other than what's in here. But it is it's much easier for us to if a venue is way far away from everything else for us to relax the standards. Is that basically what I'm what I was getting from? It it would be hard for us to impose additional standards. Um, if we originally wrote them as too lax, but it, it would be easy for us to relax the standards if they're written very strictly. That's, that's true. The, the real problem that I'm trying to focus on, though, is the nature of the law on conditional use permits is that if they satisfy the conditions in your ordinance, you shall grant the permit. And additional conditions are only allowed to be imposed with the consent of the applicant. So unless the applicant consents and says, yes, I think X decibels no later than, than 9 o'clock is appropriate, and your ordinance says 10 o'clock and has no decibel limitation, you're bound by what's in your ordinance. So it's important to get the ordinance right on the front end and allow yourself some flexibility if you're going to get into these hearings to, to have the flexibility to impose appropriate conditions based on those locations and what's uh, surrounding that location and what are the impacts from that use at that location. So, I, number one, I, I don't have a problem with all of these being special use permits. Um, I, I don't think we're going to get a huge number of these. I mean, uh, they are popular, but they're, you know, I, I can't imagine that we would see at most one a year of these, uh, if that. And, and this is the first one for an outdoor music venue that we've, you know, pretty much ever had. I, um, so anyway, that, that's just what I wanted to add to that. Well, I, I think we're going to hold the motion until we yeah, get through all of this. And we're going to have another little spooky public hearing, right? Do I? Yeah. You can open it on all of them. At uh, so I thought at the end, right? Yeah, and and if you did make that a special use, then you'd probably want to take that same language he amended about noise for the first one and apply it to this as well, and list right. that it requires a special use as part of those conditions. Um, all right. If there's no other questions, I'll move on to the amendment three, which is uh, live performance indoor. I will point out that 
the two of these are indoor, so you don't necessarily need to apply the special use to, to all of them, but you could do it to all the outdoor if that was your desire. Well, if it's your desire, you can do it to all of them, but if the concern is the, the noise, the two of them may not need that. Um, so for live performance indoor, uh, again, we're adding a definition for what is a, a, a theater live performance indoor. We are adding it into the use table to list that it's um, just permitted by right in the uh, neighborhood center NC, the CMX, CC, DMX, CH, and TND districts. Um, there's also a note for PUDs that I'm putting on all these just to say that those are all specified whenever a, a new PUD proposal comes before you. Um, and that's all I had for for this. Uh, since it was indoor, I was less concerned. They'll, of course, have to meet all of our normal standards, for, for, like any development for parking, landscaping, and all that kind of stuff. Um, if there's any questions, I have to address. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, amendment four. Uh, this one is looking at sports arena stadiums. Again, it was just kind of one of those things where the question arose, well, would something like the Mudcats be considered an outdoor event venue? Uh, do we need to treat that differently? So we were looking at creating a different category. Uh, we'd be adding a definition for it in Chapter 19, um, a structure that's open or closed and used for games, concerts, and major events, and it's partly or completely surrounded by tiers of seats for spectators. For this is, so this is something much more permanent and, and larger, although you might have somewhere else where you have some an area where you can set up for music. This is something on a, on a bigger scale. Um, and we'd be looking to add it into the use table, make it permitted uh, with a special use permit in the highway commercial, manufacturing industrial, and community center districts. So more limited areas where this could be. Uh, and that's all I have for that one, if there's any questions. Uh, and the last one is Amendment 5 is a meeting facility slash indoor event venue. Um, so we'd be including a definition for this, an indoor commercial or nonprofit facility for event venues or public assembly, uh, including but not limited to conference facilities, convention centers, indoor event space, and the like. Um, add it to our use table, making it permitted with additional standards in the, um, oh, excuse me, excuse me, um, let me go back. We'd be replacing the term medium facilities. We do have a medium facility use uh, with this medium facility indoor event venue. And we'd be amending the use table to also make this use permitted with additional standards in the, um, in the uh, mobile manufactured housing district, which we don't actually have anything zoned that presently, but we do have it in our use table, as well as the neighborhood center zoning districts. Uh, currently, this is the use for medium facilities that we'd be amending is already listed as permitted with additional standards in a host of districts um, that are basically all your residential districts. So we're making that the same with manufactured housing and the neighborhood center districts. And then we're making it permitted by right in our commercial districts. Um, although it actually is still listed as a, having a special use permit required within the downtown mixed use district. And the only standard that we'd be adding um, to this would be or one additional standard stating in the neighborhood center zoning district that this use, uh, if it's not part of a common plan of development um, and which is designed to accommodate more than 99 occupants, shall require a special use permit. The current standard essentially says that uh, these aren't allowed in the residential district unless they're part of a common plan of development where it's kind of a whole neighborhood that's being planned and they're incorporating this into it rather than somebody coming in after the fact and trying to add something along these lines. Um, so this is kind of uh, recognizing that the neighborhood center is a little bit of a mixed use. It allows both residential, some light commercial uses. Uh, so we wanted to try to allow it to be permitted without a special use permit if it was small, if it's designed to only accommodate a, you know, a small number, less than 100. But if it's going past that point, then we do think it would, should require a special use permit like it does in the DMX district. Um, so that's, that's the last of the amendments. Um, the planning board, they did vote uh, seven to zero in favor of the proposed text amendments. I mentioned the only change they made related to the outdoor event venue, trying to provide some flexibility for uh, whether or not bicycle parking requirements um, needed were necessary and reasonable um, as part of that special use proceeding. Um, 
they also looked at, uh, they included a statement of plan consistency within their recommendation, um, uh, referencing two uh, principles of the comprehensive plan, principles four and five, you have that included as part of your draft ordinance. Uh, again, we are, the staff is in support of, of making these changes uh, as amended, as we've talked about in this, um, in this meeting. So uh, if the board chooses to move forward with this, you know, we would incorporate the language that uh, you know, the attorney and myself have talked about tonight. Uh, but I guess we would want to just be clear if you are making it, um, a, which ones require a special use permit. Right. Any questions, comments, Mr. Mark? I'm going to open public hearing. Anybody have anything they'd like to say for or against the amendment, video amendment? You can speak. None. It's closed. All right. Well, I think we need we, to have some clarification about where we're going to require a special use permit. Is that correct? And along with the special use, we can change time, buffers, correct? In that process. Okay. In that process. But basically, the concern is brought up where you, you make the you make the conditional use permit as restrictive as possible, and then we're allowed to relax those restrictions if the conditions warrant. But if they are lax restrictions, then it, as long as they meet them, they will get the special use permit, and we basically we can't tighten it. So that that's that's the basic gist of it, right? Yeah. The, the fence you're walking with that approach, though, is that if you have opposition to an application, the opposition is going to want you to abide by those terms that are in the special use <coughs> permit ordinance and not relax those requirements. Me, I, I'm not comfortable voting on it as it's read due to the time as well as not knowing the decibel levels not having those set already um, and then the boundary of 200 feet I would I'd like to know where that property sits where the other residents sit and, and, and maybe um, just look at that more in detail we may this may be the first one that has come to us board but it may not be the last I doubt it'll be the last I doubt it'll be the last we can't right. we can't res other residents see it we can't really we wouldn't know where the other residents see it well, I mean, are you speaking I'd like to look on a map I'd like Staff to bring us a map to see. But, but, but here's this, like I said, here's this, and we're not, we're dealing with. But if we vote to approve these, then we're setting ourselves to the 11 p.m. and the current buffer zones in this amendment, right? Unless, unless you uh, adopt it as suggested with the amended language. Yeah, the amended language should help with that. The, the buffers, we're not setting a specific buffer. We just say that a buffer shall be identified as part of the special use proceeding. Um, the, the noise level, I, I think that the, the concern would be, one of the things he was saying is if somebody comes out to oppose a request, um, or, or let me rephrase that, if the board was looking to try to be more lenient on the time, trying to say, well, we think 12 o'clock might be okay rather than 11, and you had somebody come there who opposed it, and they said, you, you had 11 in here as your baseline, you should enforce that, that would be then make it very difficult to do, to make that, that change. But if we make the changes proposed by the attorney, um, I think that should help with the noise, um, as long as we still say in there that we, that we will identify, you know, an appropriate decibel level based on the facts presented at that, at that case. Um, if, if it is the board's desire for me to bring back an example of, of kind of the separation requirement, I, I can. I do want to point out, though, that 200-foot separation was not actually for the outdoor event venue. That was for, I think, the stadium example. And so that's limited in that, in that regard. But, I mean, I could, I could bring that kind of information examples back if, if desired. I know. I'll I'll just I'll make a motion that we we we, do, we go that route and I'd like to just have this I feel like we're just modifying and changing and working and tweaking things I'd like to just to see it written up as it is and then we can all know what we're talking about and what we're voting on exactly and then have it for the next or for the next vote maybe my motion but 
so we're going to wait on this until next time. Do we, so that was the motion. Yeah. Is that, would that be the June meeting, or would it be the work? I'm just thinking it might be good to have the attorney present. Uh, yeah, it might be. That creates too much delay. I mean, is that a problem? Uh, applicant indicates not. Well, that way the attorney would be here. Yeah. I mean, if we were just making the changes we just talked about, then I think we'd probably be okay, but I would hate for other things to come up and the attorney not be present. Right. Okay. Uh, do we need to make a motion? I mean, I think you made a motion. To do, we don't need to do that, though, do we? Oh, did you close the public hearing? Yeah. I think I did. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. I would just continue action till the till the whatever meeting is. Yeah. Okay. Hired. Okay. All right. We'll just continue action until the uh, first meeting in June. All right. Thank you. Item 5D, the public hearing on an amendment to the arterial and collector street plan as it relates to Rollsville Road. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Um, as today, we're being asked, you're being asked to hold a public hearing um, to make an amendment to the arterial and collector street plan. Um, you have a draft ordinance included as, as part of that uh, your material that could be adopted if you were prepared to do so. A uh, little bit of uh, a little bit of backdrop is we adopted this plan in November of 2016. Uh, one area that really got a lot of attention was the intersection of Roseville Road and Wendell Boulevard. Um, at the time of the adoption, there was a belief that the town could potentially partner with, with CAMPO, our MPO, to fund a realignment of Roseville Road. Um, but after further analysis, you know, the town's determined that even if we did get that MPO funding through the, something like the LAP program, that our required match would still be uh, beyond our means. Uh, so as a result, staff was directed to initiate a change to this plan to remove the realignment of Rollsville Road uh, on the north side of the intersection from the plan. Uh, it still would retain that, that segment, that new connection between uh, from Eagle Rock Road connecting up to Wendell Boulevard on the south side of Wendell Boulevard, uh, but the northern uh, curve would be removed. Uh, there wouldn't be any other changes proposed as, as part of this request. Um, so here's just highlighting where that realignment is shown. So that curve on the north side um, that I will attempt to highlight here, uh, essentially right that, well, that didn't highlight very well. Uh, but this, from that point to that point, essentially, that curve on the north side of Wendell Boulevard would be removed. Um, the rest of it would stay. And then the only difference would be you would have that tiny little piece right there which is existing road would show up as uh, a thoroughfare since that would still be used, but otherwise everything else would remain the same. Um, and the planning board did review this at their April meeting and they did vote in favor of the request uh, seven to zero uh, and they referenced uh, principle eight of our comprehensive plan uh, as part of that request. Be happy to take any questions of the board. Job questions, Mr. Bergmark. Public hearing is now open. If anyone wishes to speak for or against the amendment to uh, the ordinance to amend Appendix C of the UDO to revise the collector street plan, stand up and come forward and tell us. All right. Public oh, hearing. Did I? Did I? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Uh, my name is Grace Walter. I live off of Eagle Rock Road. Yes, ma'am. And I was even in, I attended the planning board meeting when they were discussing the realignment. And I'm not quite sure if they're, if, how the realignment's going to work. Can you give me your address? Uh, 1001 Clear Circle. Okay. And your question is, you're not sure how the... Are they putting in, an, is it going to be a T now with a light? So you'll have two lights just to get across the street? Uh, that map is not... Essentially, yes. I mean, everything that we're proposing would still have to be run through DOT. Oh. So we're not the final decision-making body in a lot of ways on this. But the plan would be that, yes, you would you would T in um, and that if, if 
you know, traffic allowed it, there would be another signalized intersection there. Um, the existing intersection would be simplified a little bit in that you wouldn't have all the same turning motions. So that the, the hope would be that the existing light at Rollsville Window Boulevard would be a shorter cycle, but you would eventually get another light at this yeah, new connection. So you'd have to go light, light to yeah. get out. Mm -hmm. right. okay. I was just curious. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, now close. What do y'all want to do? So. Madam Mayor, I make a motion to uh, approve the amendment to the Towns Artillery and Collector Street Plan as it relates to Rollsville Road. Okay. And a mo uh, motion to approve the amendment to the um, QDOs or any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number 5E is a public hearing on a request to create an R2 conditional district for property located at 1505 Marshburn Road. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the board. The Board of Commissioners is asked to hold a public hearing and discuss the proposed conditional district request. Uh, the applicant has requested action be tabled until the June 12th uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. You could uh, either table this item as requested, approve the request, uh, or as you modify it or deny the request. The applicant is Savvy Homes. The petition is to create an R2 conditional district for approximately 20.89 acres. The conditional district will consist of 23 lots for single family development and three lots for open space as shown on the master development plan. Uh, Conditional district provides an alternative means of land development and an alternative zoning procedure that may be used to establish residential, uh, commercial, industrial, conditional districts at the appropriate locations in accordance with town objectives. Uh, you can alter some of the standards as well with the conditional district. Uh, this property is currently located within the jurisdiction of Wake County but does fall within the town's short range urban service area. The urban service area represents areas which the county expects to eventually come under a given municipality's jurisdiction. It's in the county's R40 zoning. Uh, the applicant has requested to annex the property into the Wendell corporate limits, which would be heard after this case. Annexation must be approved by the town board of commissioners prior to approval, uh, or with the approval to grant the zoning authority for the subject property. Uh, the applicant is proposing to extend the existing public water line located along Marshburn Road and to new streets created as part of this development proposal. Public sewer is not available, so each lot must provide a septic system and recovery repair area. Sewer easements should be provided in order to ease the burden of installing sewer to lots in the future. Uh, here's a map of the zoning around it. You've got residential all surrounding it, uh, R20 to the west and R40 all around it. Here's an aerial of the property. You have a few homes uh, towards the front of it that are adjacent to it. And here is the master development plan. You've got the main road coming in, and it stubs to the north and the south. Uh, you can see the 23 lots with the open space, and um, it's got a stream running through part of the property. The applicant is proposing seven conditions as uh, through this conditional district. The first is to limit single-family residential and associated uses only. Uh, the applicant's proposing that only single-family dwellings be allowed with this development and their associated uses. That removes anything else that would be allowed in the R2 zoning, including uh, family care homes, child adult daycare homes, cemeteries, churches. Uh, staff found this request acceptable, as well as the planning board found it acceptable. The second request is a fee in lieu for Marshburn Road improvements in the amount of $173,000, 158 158 and five cents uh, shall be provided prior to the approval of the final plat. Staff finds this request to pay the fee and lieu is acceptable and the town's engineer reviewed the estimate and determined that it was acceptable as well. The planning board accepted the applicant's proposed conditions but at that time didn't have the fee estimate to, uh, to review. Uh, this would be for widening as the uh, arterial and collector street plan requires it to uh, be median with an extra lane, a bike lane. So rather than a tiny little amount on Marshburn Road, they would just pay the cost of, of doing that road work. Uh, the third request is that a 20-foot wide greenway easement be provided along that stream uh, on the western edge of the Noose Buffer, located with Zone 2 of the buffer shown on the Master Development Plan. 
staff and planning board found this acceptable. The fourth condition is that a 20 foot wide uh, future sanitary sewer easement be provided uh, look with the locations determined at the time of the final development plan. Staff and planning board both found this reasonable. The fifth request is that the five foot side five foot wide concrete sidewalk be provided on one side of the road uh, on the back side of the ditch utilizing the rural street road cross section as shown on the master development plan. Staff and planning board found this condition acceptable. The sixth proposed condition is that street trees be placed outside of the right of way and provided in a landscape easement. Staff and planning board found this proposed condition acceptable. The seventh request is that all single family dwellings be at least 1900 square feet of finished and heated areas. Staff find this acceptable as well as the planning board found this acceptable. Staff does recommend two conditions to go along with this as well. The eighth uh, condition would be that uh, at the time of the final development plan, signage be provided at both ends of road B to indicate the future road connections be made at, at those locations so that anyone moving in there would just be aware that that road could be extended in the future. Uh, planning board found that to be acceptable. The ninth condition is just a plat note that would basically say that, you know, they're providing sewer sy septic systems as their sewer since it's not available. And, um, you know, if, if sewer were to be available in the future that we'd reassess the feasibility providing sewer service and uh, at the request of the homeowners, they would, they would most likely have to incur a cost of putting that in. Uh, as currently proposed, the master development ha plan has a mixture of improvements and exemptions being sought. The applicant is proposing to limit development to only single family dwellings, uh, set a minimum house size of 1,900 square feet. Uh, all other proposed changes, such as allowing the rural road cross section, which doesn't require the curb and gutter, and allowing sidewalk instead of multi-use path constitute reductions in design and site standards. No off-street parking is required for single-family dwellings. They are providing two parking spaces to, uh, at the front of the development to serve the cluster mailbox units that are required by the post office. The applicant is required to dedicate a minimum of 0.92 acres of open space with a minimum of 0.23 acres of active open space. They're proposing to dedicate three acres of open space and 0.24 acres of active open space. The active open space will be developed as a tot lot. The applicant is also pr proposing to provide the 20 foot wide public access greenway easement should the town want to install a greenway trail in the future. Uh, lighting shall meet the requirements of the UDO at the time of the final development plan. Public water will be extended at the time of development per the adopted water allocation policy. This project has 38 base points and must attain an additional 12 base points. The applicant's proposing certified playground equipment, light pole banners throughout town and uh, three acres of additional open space. Public sewer is not available for the subject site. The applicant's proposing to develop lots using the Wake County septic regulations, which requires drainage area and a repair area. The application is also proposing to provide the sewer easements, um, which staff is recommending to show on the final development plan. Uh, for streets, at the time of the construction of all new roads, the standards must be met of the UDO. Applicants proposing two rural road cross-section streets, which are 60 feet wide. All drives have to meet the UDO standards. Uh, as requested in condition two, the applicant's trying to use the rural road cross-section, um, which does not require curb and gutter, but would have a five-foot sidewalk on one side and the street trees. The arterial collector street plan calls for the frontage improvements along Marshburn Road, which they're requesting uh, fee and lieu, just to let you know exactly what those improvements would call for. It calls for a four lane divided road, a major thoroughfare, which is 110 foot wide. Marshburn's currently 60 foot wide, requiring 25 feet of dedication, which the applicant's providing. The plan calls for the applicant to either install half of a median, two 12 foot wide lanes, a five foot bike lane, curb gutter, street trees and a six foot sidewalk or pay the fee and lieu. Um, and they have about 265 feet of frontage along Marshburn Road. Applica uh, landscaping must meet the, app the UDO at the time of final development plan and building permits. Development of the site is required to meet stormwater st standards contained in the UDO. Uh, there's no phasing being proposed. The comprehensive plan labels this area as the S4 control growth sec sector, which does allow for uh, you know, traditional neighborhoods, so this would meet the comprehensive plan. Uh, the statement of plan consistency and reasonableness is uh, required for any uh, map amendment. Uh, in staff's opinion, the requested conditional district is consistent with the recommended uses and development types outlined in the S4 sector of the comprehensive plan. 
At its April 17th meeting, the planning board voted seven to zero to recommend approval of this conditional district and uh, staff suggests the following changes be added as conditions. First, that the signs be uh, added at the end of road B and then the plat note about uh, outlying possible sewer in the future. <coughs> we do have with us uh, Jerry Radman of Savvy Homes and his engineer, Jerry, uh, Joe Faulkner as well. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Brookmore? I mean, uh, Mr. Reedy. Uh, Mr. Reedy, um, the the active open space, uh, I believe you said tight lot. Yes. Um, that's located at the north end of proposed Street B. Yes, right here. Right. That, that correct? That top. Yes. That top corner. Okay. Any other questions? I have one. Okay. Uh, why are they requesting us delay action until the 12th? Uh, I'd let him, I'd let the applicant uh, answer that. They just wanted to give more time for the board to consider it, um, but if he has anything to add to that. Um, I do want to add that we did receive a written request for the property owner uh, who's adjacent to the north uh, requesting that the applicant build a fence along the, her property line. I did uh, suggest that she come to the public hearing to to divulge more into her request. I'm not certain if she's here, but I, I did want to make that known. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Public hearing is now open. Anyone wants to speak? Yes, ma'am, come on. <laughs> Slides. Mary Can you give Moser. us your name and address Mary again? Mary Moser, 1601 Marshburn Road. Thank you. Um, there was a larger one before. Yes. Is is that the property that Mr. Furs? That one right there. Is that Mr. Furs? These two right here. Okay. And where is the lake that's behind it? That's right. Actually, I kind of just circled it. Okay. So... Your applicant is aware that an outdoor venue is going to be right across the road from this development. Yeah. 11 o'clock at night, music, electronic music. That is, would you consider, is that a material fact that has to be disclosed to people who are going to be buying these homes? Uh, I'd let the attorney weigh in to that, that use isn't approved right now for one. This, this is an opportunity for public comment. And I think the board will receive public comments. But Can we ask a question like that? I, I don't know. I'm not trying to be difficult, but I'm just concerned if I were going to buy a house there, I wouldn't want my children to be across the road from a venue where music can be played until 11 o'clock at night. And this, uh, it looks like those two things are pretty much set up from like this. I mean, did you guys know the, where those two were relative to each other before now? Yeah, I've spent the better part of two days looking at aerial maps of this area. Um, and uh, I completely sympathize and, and can relate to Commissioner Myrick's comments on your piece of property, and, and I understand the the angst there but as i tried to point out with the chief it can be done anywhere i mean this is one of those things that we have the freedom to enjoy our land peacefully and i know that there's a lot of case law on that but there's also a lot of case law on people owning property and being able to do what they want on the property so it's going to have to balance the two and that's i think um, the fact that there's a development coming in right across the street maybe could help uh, calm a little of the fears as to what may or may not be going in around there. You know, my concern is this, I don't own anything that, you know, in this area, but I'm, I'm just concerned that, you know, you're, I, I'm thinking that perhaps you would want to include some kind of language that would say that, that the impact is classified as a material fact that must be disclosed. That, that's really not this board's issue. That, that, that's really not this board's issue. That would be for that property owner to determine in in their judgment. 
it, if, as a property owner is disposing of property, selling property, they would be the one to make that determination of what they needed to disclose to a potential buyer. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that, and I'm sorry I didn't lean close enough. Um, I do have concerns, and I do appreciate the fact that you've given me the opportunity to express them. I ask you, would you want to buy a house there? Can I ask something before you step away? Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to monopolize, and I'm sorry I came up well, twice. With the board's permission, which property is yours? 1601. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can. I think it's. Have, where is Buck Stage? Oh, well. It's just, just north of there. Where is Buck Stage Road? I think it's. It comes out right about there. Right there? Yeah. Probably. I'm not sure because I can't get it out to have enough perspective. Is, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, the, is that Buck Stage Road right there? Yes. Okay, then that one. Uh -huh. Yes, that's Marshburn Road. And, and there's land that may be developed here also, I know that you all have heard those things too, so please don't think this is one homeowner trying to exercise control over the uh, your deci decisions. I, rep I respect the fact that, that you have the right to do what you think is best. I'm simply pointing out that if you've got land development for homeowners, then you want families to come and you also are saying that it, you, you're making it more readily available in the same area that you're developing for an outdoor venue that can go every night until 11 o'clock, then you're probably going to have some unhappy homeowners and you probably will have some unhappy developers at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Your time's up. I'm sorry. That's I okay. went over and I apologize. Time. Would anybody else like to speak? Public hearing is now closed. What do y'all want to do? Oh, we're waiting until June 12th. But you have the option to not. So what do y'all want to do? Madam Mayor, yes. was, was there anyone else? <coughs> Okay, come on. My name is Joe Faulkner with the CE Group, 301 Glenwood Avenue, Raleigh. Um, one of the things I'd like to point out is we are providing about 20% of the total acreage of open space. Um, certainly, as uh, also I'll comment uh, relative to the concerns the uh, lady before me had mentioned, uh, some of the off-site venue, that, that of course is somewhat of a concern. I'll let Jerry Rabin with Savvy Homes himself uh, address that uh, with the board. But um, other than that, I just would, uh, any questions that you may have regarding the technical aspects of the plan, I'd be more than happy to address or answer. Do you still want to delay in this decision? Yes. And again, part of that delay is somewhat related, waiting to see sort of how this outdoor venue uh, uh, approval uh, moves forward. Because that does have bearing on it also. I have a question. Some of your other um, projects that y'all have done are called Eco Select Homes. Is that what you're planning to do here? Excuse me, ma'am. Mayor, Mayor. Come on up. Some of the other projects that y'all have done are something you call, some of the homes are called Eco Select Homes? Um, there's, we have an, an amplified uh, product line and an Imagine Homes product line, and then we have what we call our legacy. Um, Eco is not, I'm not familiar with that. Okay. That's and, something I read online. Madam Mayor, would you get him to say his name for the record? Could you state your name? Oh, yes. My name is Jerry Radman um, with Savvy Homes, and I live at 102 Foxbriar Lane in Cary, North Cary. Um, if I could just speak, um, the reason I'm um, asking for the delay 
was, as uh, Mr. Faulkner um, stated, um, there is a concern if an event went there because we have, this is the Bucks family property. It's on both the east and west sides of uh, Marshburn, Mashburn, Marshburn Road. And um, so it would be, uh, it's the, this piece of property, and then it goes back. You can't see it. Um, and so the, um, the delay was to see what happened tonight and the reaction of the board to the, uh, the ordinance change. And um, so we just wanted to take into consideration that because we would be right up against it in the next phase of, of the project. It's not before you now, but we do have a contract to purchase both sides of the road. Thank you. If you have any other questions, please feel free to give me them. Now we're close. So do you all want to delay? Do you have the option to uh, table, approve, deny, whatever you'd like? He did. He asked okay. if we would, but we have the option to act if you choose. Table it. Item 5F, public hearing. Madam Mayor, yes, can we tabling. clarify that they're tabling it to a date certain? Yes. Um, what was the request? The 12th of June? Is that June 12th? Thank you. Thank you. Public hearing to consider a satellite annexation petition for 21.24 acres of property located at 1505 Marshburn Road. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Um, this is essentially just the corresponding annexation request that will go along with the conditional dish request. Uh, they've made the same request to, um, to delay action until the June 12th meeting. Uh, I, I won't go into great detail other than to just point out um, that this, uh, you know, when we annex in, Typically, you're extending uh, services. There isn't sewer at the site, as Patrick mentioned. It is, it is septic, um, and it's about a mile north of our current corporate limits um, and our current sewer service. So they would be on septic in the meantime, um, and of course, the police would go out to this would have to go out to this area to service it as well. Right. Um, if you have to take any questions, you may have. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Burkmark? Okay. Public hearing. I'll open. Anyone like to speak for or against the satellite annexation petition? State your name and address again, please. Sure. My name is Jerry Radman. I live at 102 Foxbriar Lane in Cary. Um, Madam Mayor, um, the reason for the delay was um, we did not want to put the property owner in jeopardy if we felt we couldn't move forward. And so we wanted uh, time to digest uh, the results of this meeting and have some more discussions. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? I don't care if you want to. I feel like we're having a crazy meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I, just, I feel like we're, we're walking away and leaving this in like three different shades of gray. So yeah. like y'all are concerned about this development and you're concerned about what's happening across the road. This poor guy just wants to open up an event center. He thought he was walking in free and clear. Um, and now everything is contingent on each other and it's, we're just going to delay till June 12th. And I can, from my uh, very long two year tenure, say that we're going to show up on June 12th and we're going to be sitting right where we are. We don't better know what you need. I, I, you can't make anybody happy if you don't know what you need. And right now I know that everybody has concerns about somebody else's project uh, and that theirs is good to go. 
that's about where I'm at. So if, if, if there's specific things that are concerning the delay that could be resolved, um, just so I know what we're trying to resolve in the next month. What is it that we're going to be doing that's going to get us closer to an agreement? Um, I'm the land manager for uh, Savvy Homes. I do all their land and lot acquisitions. And um, what I just need to do is report back that the event, is, the event venue seems to be at least on a track where it may uh, come about and so it's a great investment we, you know we have purchased the land we have to develop the property and we have a hundred seventy three thousand dollar payment in lieu to the town and we only have between 20 and 23 lots so that's a lot of money per lot you know seventy five hundred dollars a lot so it's a it's a it's a large investment so we have to work in, during the next two weeks two three weeks we're going to just discuss whether it's we want to take that chance because the board can make the decision as they see fit for the town and we're just going to have to take a look at a decision we think makes long-term financial uh, um, sense for the company. That's all. And, and you understand that us <coughs> delaying um, uh, taking action on the special use permit for outdoor music venues um, whether that is approved or denied at the, because that was rescheduled also for the 12th, correct? Um, yes. That, you do understand that our approval or lack thereof does not specifically affect that project, so there will still not be an answer as to that project on the 12th, which is when you're requesting to have this project um, um, rezoned and annexed, correct? That's correct. I, I would just assume that if we move forward, we'd be well along and have spent a considerable amount of money. And, and the gentleman that's proposing the venue has already, if I understood him correctly, he has already purchased one, pro, one parcel and he's preparing to maybe close on another parcel. So that puts him, he, so he has a vested interest. I have a vested interest and maybe our interest might not be the, might not be the same. So I just have to be careful. And just uh, advise my uh, um, my folks appropriately, so we can make a, a risk assessment. Because that would be what we would be doing. Yes. Okay. Like I think anyone else along that road. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joshua Fur, 1408 Marshburn Road. Um, Actually, I introduced myself to Jerry immediately um, when I found out that Jim Allen, the listing broker, was representing this property and then did have it pending. Um, out of respect, I coordinated a, a meeting with Jim Allen and his planners um, and discussed um, the, the, the plan um, that we'd like to propose to all of you. And they were behind it 110%. Um, I actually thought that the town needed it. And I think that um, due to this piece that I'm acquiring, definitely on the 26th of this month, um, that has a big effect on their future project across the street. Um, I want to see the growth happen on, uh, up and down Marshburn Road. I'm a, I've been in real estate my entire life with my parents. So I appreciate that. And um, I'll, I want to be a part of it. But I think that um, uh, the... Uh, the um, What's the way to put it? I think that their cooperation with me or this concept has changed due to me not wanting to develop that piece of land or allow them to purchase prop, uh, part of it or have an easement. I think they are just um, sort of not happy. I'm not going on with their offers. So I want to keep it as is and let it be natural. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? My name is John Anderson. I reside at 2449 Westlake Drive in Raleigh. We own the property at 1528 Marshman Road, roughly 30 acres. I wasn't going to say anything tonight because y'all said we were going to wait to get down the road, but the noise is definitely going to be an issue if he's allowed to put that event venue. And I have a friend that owns an event venue in Lewisburg that does weddings. 
they don't own just 30 acres. They've got roughly 400 acres in there. I can be on the other end of the property when the parties are going on. It's farmland. I can hear the noise that far away. So my concern is not just for him, for him. I want them to be able to do stuff with their property, but I don't want anybody to be able to do anything that adversely affects us down the road either. I don't think anybody sitting up here would want to live next to it when the events are going on, including Mr. Fur. And I think y'all got to come up with some way that not necessarily shut him down, but something that's fair to the remaining landowners. And at some point, we are going to do something with that piece of ours. I'd possibly thought about building on part of it, but I can tell you I, that wouldn't happen if I got an event venue down the road. And our family's owned that farm probably 80, 90 years. So that's my two cents worth. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Public hearing is now closed. And actions tabled until June 12, 2017. off Marshburn Road here for a little while. <laughs> Item number six is discussion and action on a proposed mural for 128 North Main Street. Mr. Reedy. Good evening again. The town board is asked to discuss and take action on the Appearance Commission's recommendation regarding a mural application. Uh, at the May 1st meeting, the Appearance Commission reviewed one mural application and voted 4-0 to, to approve the mural application for the site of 128 North Main Street, which is where Hedrick Insurance Agency is located. Uh, back in 2013, the, as part of their long-range work plan, the Appearance Commission set a goal of having murals painted throughout the downtown area of Wendell as well as other areas. Uh, we've had a number of them throughout downtown. Um, Sherry Hedrick, the owner of the building, approached the Appearance Commission last year about adding a mural to the side of her Wendell Boulevard side of her building. At the April 3rd meeting, uh, Peggy Lockery stated that she would like to do a mural using Oliver Wendell Holmes quote, where we love is home, home that our feet may leave, but not our hearts. Ms. Lockery uh, suggested that the place of the mural be located on the side of Hedrick Insurance Agency. Uh, Ms. Lockery stated that with the permission of Ms. Hedrick, she would ask members of the community to donate towards the cost of the mural for an estimated cost of about 2,500. Uh, she'd like to paint the names of the donors in the corner of the mural as a thank you for their donation. Uh, Mrs. Lockery uh, would outline and paint the mural, and Mrs. Hedrick has approved the mural design. Uh, the mu mural would take up a majority of the wall. Um, on the picture you're about to see, the bushes have been removed from uh, in front of that wall, and here's the proposed mural that would go onto the wall. Um, it staff has uh, reviewed the mural application and deemed it acceptable, and staff requests that the Board of Commissioners review the recommendation and take action on it. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Reedy? Are those the exact colors that will be used? That is her plan. She, those are the, uh, she provided me a sample with all the paint colors of everything, so she was very meticulous, so I would imagine it would turn out something very close to that. The, the colored borders on the side uh, may stretch slightly one way or the other, depending on how she actually lays it out. Um, so, but that would, that's the general overall look of what that wall would look like. I think it'll be nice to finally have a mural on that building. <laughs> I don't think the, the paint chips I saw were maybe quite so bright, maybe. It just looks a little brighter with color pencil. It might pick up a little brighter. Questions? Um, don't we need to, uh, if we, the board decides to approve this, direct the manager to issue a certificate appropriateness of appropriateness for this? Correct. So that would need to be included in the motion? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, that's just part of the procedure okay. regardless. Okay. All right. So what do y'all want to do, fellas? Motion to approve the uh, Bureau of 
on 28 North Main Street. A motion to approve the mural. All, is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? All right. No. Uh, All right. Item number seven is appointments to Citizen Advisory Board, the Parents Commission, Board of Adjustment, Economic Development Committee, Parks and Recreation Commission, Planning Board, and Tree Board. I believe Ms. Scoggins is going to help us with this. All right, Madam Mayor and Board, the recruitment for the Citizen Advisory Boards launched on Tuesday, February 28th, and wrapped up on Tuesday, April 4th. Applications for boards with residency requirements were reviewed. Those meeting the requirements are included in your packets this evening for consideration. Applicants that are outside of the residency requirements were notified of their ineligibility to serve on a municipal level and were provided information about Wake County Citizen Advisory Boards. Letters were mailed to the applicants on April 7th. Um, many of the applicants attended our April 24th regular meeting and stayed afterwards to meet the board. Um, we did have one withdrawal and that has been removed from your packet. Um, in total, the town has six Citizen Advisory Boards and across the six boards are 19 seats with terms expiring June 30th, 2017. Um, for the benefit of those that are attending this evening, this evening each of our elected officials has been given a ballot sheet for each Citizen Advisory Board, and it includes the names of all the applicants wishing consideration on that particular board. The ballot sheet notes the number of vacant seats and if there is a residency requirement for the board. After each um, board, we will collect the applications and tally up the numbers to determine who will be serving the seats beginning July 1st. Um, so, with that, uh, we would like to start with the planning board. The planning board has three members with terms expiring in 2017. Of the three seats, two are for in-town residents and one is for an ETJ position. The ETJ position will be a recommendation by the Wendell Board of Commissioners and with the letter being forwarded to Wake County for final appointment at one of their board meetings. So, with that, I'll let you all. While they are filling out their applications or their ballots, I, I wanted to make a comment. I um, was very pleased to see the number of applications that we received this year. And I just I tallied this up and thought I would just tell you uh, briefly for the appearance committee, we had four, four spots available and eight applicants. For the Board of Adjustment, we had five spots, uh, four spots available and five applicants. For the Economic Development Committee, we had three spots available and 11 applicants. For the Planning Board, three spots available and 11 applicants. For the Parks and Recreation Committee, we had two spots available and six applicants. And for the Tree Board, we have three spots available and five applicants. So it's wonderful that there's so many great things going on in Wendell that everybody wants to be part of it. And I thank you for your submitting your application. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to put everybody on one because we just have so many. So if for some reason you don't wind up on one, there are plenty of opportunities for you to be part of all the great things that are happening in town. The Chamber of Commerce is always looking for volunteers and help, and they do a lot of these very same things. The um, Senior Center is always looking for volunteers and help, and I thought I had thought of one other place, but I, it slipped my mind now. So um, I just want to thank everybody for their willingness to help serve the citizens of Wendell. So thank you. All right, are y'all ready with one? Uh, we're ready with the we've, first. We've given her one. Okay. Yeah, okay. We've got we'll a little God. bag up on the appearance commission. We are? In an applicant. Who are we missing? Not on the ballot. I believe it's the one you said was pulled. Who, who, who was the applicant that requested it to be pulled? Elizabeth House. No, no. 
Are we missing one? We are. We do a right in. Oh. Wait, right in. Is it supposed to be on there? Madam Mayor, for a motion. That we suspend the rules for voting uh, for this appearance commission ballot to allow board members to write in a name as they see fit. Okay. A motion to suspend the rules and write in a name for the appearance commission ballot only. Appearance commission ballot only. Okay. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 So are you ready for your results for the planning board? Yes, ma'am. Let's hear it. Okay. Um, by acclamation, Michael Clark and Jonathan Andrew Olson for in town. And the recommendation for ETJ will be T. Allen Swain. And that letter will be of recommendation for Mr. Swain will be sent to the Wake County Board of Commissioners for final appointment. Could you read those to me one more time, please? A lot of rustling. I couldn't hear. Okay. For planning board, the in town. Um, folks are Michael Clark uh -huh. and Jonathan Andrew Olson. Thank you. I, I got it now. Thank you. Okay, your slate for the Appearance Commission are as follows. Brian Pace, Sandy Fouch, 
Tiffany Graham, and Michael Eugene Hancock. Okay, your, for your slate for your Board of Adjustment is for three in-town members and one ETJ member. The three in-town members are Mr. Lucius Jones, Ms. Paula Sharon, and Mr. Russell Blair Hinkle. Your ETJ recommendation is Thomas Scoggins. His recommendation will be forwarded to the Wake County Board of Commissioners for final appointment. Okay, our Economic Development Committee has three members with terms expiring in your slate that was selected is Valerie Deloach, Brian M. Green, and H. Lee Mabry. He'll do it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
There's three. I didn't know. And then Louis. They haven't told us yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So we're not at the tree board. Well, I know. They just put those in the tree board, I think. Okay. I don't have my people under control. Okay. I think they understand. Did y'all pass that news down? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It was pretty clear on the ballot, I thought. Well, I didn't know. We didn't know prior to that about the other designation, but thank you. So don't get cranky down there. There is nobody in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, parks and rec. Okay. okay, Madam Mayor and Board, for your Parks and Rec Commission, you have two in-town members with terms expiring June 30th, 2017, and the Board selected Thomas J. Mack and Will Hardison to fill those slots, effective July 1st. Madam Mayor and the Board, the Tree Board has three members with terms expiring June 30th, 2017. Um, there are four candidates on the um, ballot for consideration. One of the candidates has expressed an interest in serving as an ex officio member. So the three members that will be appointed um, as voting members to the Board are Catherine Edwards, Warren Boyette, and Joy B. Hicks. The ex officio member who is a non-voting member, but can be called upon as a resource, will be Mr. Lewis Piner. And that is your slate of applicants for the July 1, 2017 period. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's always interesting. <laughs> Item number eight, resolution opposing House Bill 436. Mayor, members of the board, this matter came before you at the last meeting. House Bill 436 will impact the town's ability to leverage capacity fees that are applied toward the towns. Currently in our situation, the performa, other municipalities, it would affect them in different ways. Uh, the town collected approximately $635,000, um, and we brought to you a um, resolution at the uh, last meeting talking about support or support in opposition to House Bill 436. At that time, it was recommended that additional changes be made to make it more specific to the town of Wendell, and we have done that and brought that 
back to you this evening. Uh, again, looking at it from a perspective of the town of Wendell and not a larger um, region. And so we ask that you consider this uh, for action this evening. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Connor? Comments? I'll just clarify that I asked for the previous resolution to be tabled. Um, I would never uh, hope to be on the side of opposing a house bill uh, on the behalf of the town. It just uh, doesn't seem like good government have to go back and forth. That said, uh, the bill that was initially uh, not marked to go is then turned into a study bill. Uh, you'll notice in the last line there's a whereas clause that states that uh, the new bill as written does not seek to consult with the league of municipalities or uh, North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Uh, so I'm registering my opposition to the study bill not being framed correctly. Uh, and that's why I'll support this motion. Any other comments? Okay. So the motion to approve is um, the resolution as written. Any comments on the motion? All in favor? Uh -huh. All right. Item number nine, presentation and review of the proposed fiscal year 2017-2018 town of Wendell budgets. Uh, set a public hearing for Monday, May 22nd, 2017. Madam Mayor, members of the board, I'll ask uh, Mr. Butch K to come up in case there are questions at this time. It's always good to know and to have your finance department receive uh, awards and accolations during um, budget time. Um, and they have done a great job um, guiding us through this process to date. Um, as stated, the public hearing, this is a presentation of the budget. There will be copies this evening or following this evening's meeting online. We will have it in the library as well as here at Town Hall for the public to review and um, again to get familiar with the budget until our next meeting where we actually have the public hearing. Um, at this time, the uh, vote is scheduled for June 12th. Uh, again, a balanced budget is presented to you uh, this evening in accordance with general statutes. Um, it identifies the revenues and expenditure, expenditure estimates for the 17-18 year. Uh, the budget this year is uh, over $7 million for the town of Window. I'm not sure if that's the largest, but it's uh, one of the largest budgets that I've been aware of in the time that I have been with the town of Window. Again, we have had meetings building up to this date, uh, starting, uh, well, we had a retreat and kind of giving our goals and priorities, taking those on from the board, but actual meetings regarding the budget started in February, February 27th, March 27th, uh, April 24th, and we even met again this afternoon before we got here tonight. We are looking, and I think for uh, many other citizens, it's important for them to um, know and to recognize that we are not looking at changing the uh, tax rate at this time, uh, 49 cent per 100 valuation. Um, again, gave a reference for a home uh, that's $175,000, um, paying $857.50 in municipal taxes during a year's time. Some of the things, and again, these are our highlights for this evening, um, we'll be looking at much needed equipment. With the growth that we're experiencing comes the need for new equipment to be able to continue the services um, and, and uh, expand upon those services where at all possible and improve those services to our citizens. We have a leaf truck um, that um, we uh, use quite frequently and we have that uh, for 
on there to be financed. The new one, five police cars, a bucket truck, and just to let you know that that one is used, we are looking at what our options are. Um, hopefully with what we have budgeted, we'll be able to um, find a good quality used truck. It is something that we do not use every day, but it's very important when it, when, uh, it is needed, whether it's trimming trees or during the holiday season. Um, and in between those holidays and large events, there's usually something that gets stuck in a tree or on a pole that we need help with. And I've just been very thankful for the town of Zebulon uh, and working with us and allowing us to use their equipment when we have needed it. And they've been very gracious and great neighbors to have. Uh, we are looking at four additional full-time positions. Again, uh, experiencing growth but not necessarily enough to cover these full-time positions coming on all at one time. Public Works, we're looking at one position coming um, on or uh, advertising for immediately July 1. The other uh, Public Works positions would be uh, looking at after the first of the year as well as the police position. Um, and so, but it would be full, full, full time coming on, and we would have to pick up their full salaries next, next budget year. We'd have to make sure that we budget for that properly. Highlights include again equipment purchases, police radios, those are um, changing and no longer going to be supported, and so we have to have our radios, our police with, uh, working radios. Uh, interview, record, interview recording system, computers, basketball goals. Um, and, and when we first look at that, and that has been a question, and we've been asking for basketball goals for quite some time, just want to let people know that, that it's not just additional basketball goals. It is because of the type that we have, and it's a safety issue and a safety concern that Public uh, Parks and Rec has expressed to us over a number of years. And so, it on, and not only from safety perspective, but it protects the uh, floor at the community center as well right now and having to move the types of goals we have, uh, damage to the floor does occur. Uh, looking at senior center um, ADA doors there, uh, implementing again the facade grant. Uh, also with facilities, we're looking at, and this would be a loan, uh, more than 1.1 million one of the things that we've been doing for several years, five years as a matter of fact, is leasing the f police p facility at 9 South Pine Street. Um, and we are looking to purchase that and we're working on that as we speak, wayfinding signage. I think that's gonna be a great benefit to the community. Some of the things that were started in the past and many people still uh, comment on it today is the um, nice sign when you're coming in at 97 if you're on 64 business and seeing that sign at 97. We want to continue that look and that theme and providing direction for those people that are visiting our community. And we're also not only having more visitors to our community, again, new residents to our community, and hopefully we can guide them to those places that they would, uh, they're coming to visit. Uh, tennis courts, we know that we've received recent damage uh, to those tennis courts open space. Uh, this is a piece of property that we already own um, and we were leasing that or uh, paying, making payments back to Wake County. The local government commission recommend that we combine that into this loan process so that we could get a, a, a better rate and it would be a better way to move forward. We have six years left on that. Again, all of this with facilities and this large uh, loan would require um, LGC approval. Uh, we welcome that because it's something that will look at our uh, loans as well as our finances. And we are looking to have a final approval in June as we move forward. We're fortunate that we have Wake County grants, ABC, 21,000 coming in. Also, Governor's Crime Control, 24,000 for uh, new firearms. Um, as well as elections. That's going to be a little bit different. We have elections coming up this fall. It's an additional expense that, again, um, that is, that's mandated. We have no, um, you know, option there um, to participate. And uh, we're, we're glad that we're able to do so. But, again, it does cost. Uh, training of elected officials, again, is another 
uh, mandated requirement that has an additional expense this year that we haven't in the past. We're looking at special appropriations, East Wake uh, Education Foundation, Wendell Historic Society, and Interact. We're looking at approximately a 9.7% increase um, over uh, the upcoming budget over what we currently have, looking at 2%, 2.5% uh, cost of living increase for employees. Uh, the budget does not include, and I just want to uh, fill in uh, some of these things because it's a large budget, but it doesn't cover everything. You know, we lost our um, uh, clerk position, and so you know we're not able to fill that this time. Again, as we did last year, we're looking at part-time assistance with that. The Wi-Fi at the park, that was something we looked at, but again, it was uh, probably going to be more than uh, $20,000, and it's something we couldn't afford to do right now. Lap projects, uh, study for the parkway and the boulevard near the elementary school. Uh, ball field lights on field three. Again, being able to expand and use the park, but that's going to be 100000 plus, and we just can't do that right now. Small area plan continues to be uh, an item we would like to look at and consider for the future because we're talking about our connection along Wendell Falls Parkway from our downtown core to the interchange, and how do we want that to look? Um, and we also discussed uh, vans, not only for camp choices and track out camp, but for senior programs and expanding programs at the park. And it was something, again, with the cost that we weren't able to, um, to add at this time. We are looking at the uh, public hearing scheduled for May the 22nd. Copies are going to be available online in the library and town hall, as we uh, just stated. Uh, Butch and I are here, and uh, we'll try to answer any questions you, that you may have. And if you have questions uh, of the board or the public between now and our next meeting, we certainly would ask that you call us and let us know. We may be able to answer your question. We may be able to... Um, um, help you to understand a concern that you might have, uh, then, of course, you're always uh, free and welcome and uh, to come to our public hearing on May 22nd. Anybody have any questions or comments from Connor, Mr. K? The only comment I have I made earlier is the budget <coughs> uh, work session. Um, it is a little hard for me to swallow a, a budget that increases by nearly 10% and doesn't include, include merit raises for um, uh, for staff. I am happy to see the cost of living increases, and I understand um, it, it is a priority to keep the, the tax rate as, as low as is feasible. Um, and the other thing is, is that a lot of the, the a lot of that increase is in capital outlay. It's you know, because of the opportunity to purchase the police station and and a lot of the capital outlay for uh, replacing equipment and things. But you know, um, the, the people, of, the employees are what make the town run. And uh, I would have liked to seen, um, uh, you know, if we were going to belt tighten a little bit more for the um, for the merit for the merit raises. Um, and so that's that's my that's my only grievance with this budget. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll let's see how it gets today. Item number 10, review of the proposed fee schedule for the 2017-2018 fiscal year. Um, and it will be scheduled to be adopted in June as well. Ms. Hunter? Madam Mayor, members of the board, I was looking at, um, well, I had mine marked up, and it may be at my seat. Let me check for just a moment. We had very few changes in that phase schedule. Just a Okay. Well, um, what I wanted to look at is that the, I like the first, say, four or five pages is what our current fee schedule is. 
And so you'll see that. Um, and, and then when we get to at the top, it'll change. It'll say agenda item number 10, attachment B. That is where we'll recognize a few, a few changes that we have highlighted. Um, on that first page where it says attachment B, um, you'll see a new page um, talking about golf carts, solid waste, recycling fees, vehicle tax fees, um, and the filing fee. We've got the, the elections coming up. We've just not had it in that format for a while. Those aren't what I would call new fees anyway. It's just been compiled together uh, to hopefully help the citizens as we move through that. Also, what you'll see is on page three of eight, again, attachment B, a few changes. Uh, where will you see athletic fields where they're tournament? What we're doing is the next year, we're looking at increasing field use, $200 a day. Uh, we're gonna increase that by $50, it's 150 now, where it has lights. Um, Field three will go up uh, from $75 to $25 a day. And so that will be an additional increase for next year. One of the things that we're really excited about right now is beach volleyball. It's something we haven't had in the past. I have to say Parks and Recreation has been very creative where they remove the old playground. They have now uh, set that up as a beach volleyball area. So we didn't have a rental and we've had a lot of interest, especially now that it's gotten warmer for people wanting to come out. And so they have that listed there as $10 an hour. That is a brand new fee. It's a brand new program. Page four of eight. Um, in some ways, this may be one of the biggest changes. Um, where we are looking at renting the entire facility serving alcohol, we have broken that down into um, just two lump sums. In the past, um, it was kind of like going through a checklist of how many people you needed and how many, if you needed, uh, what you needed and how many tables and chairs you needed and, and the kitchen. And sometimes it could get rather cumbersome. Uh, when you're renting the facility. And so we looked at what our numbers were and felt that it would be simpler and easier for staff as well as those wanting to rent the entire facility to come up with what we call a flat fee. Um, and again, there's an in-town rate versus an out-of-town rate. Um, and we're hoping this is gonna simplify it for everyone. And again, it's something we will look at again next year uh, as we move through this process. Also on page 5-8, updated the allowed number of attendees to reflect Wake County Fire Marshal occupancy posting. Again, it's just some information on our fee schedule. Our fee schedule is ba uh, based upon some of the occupants with the alcohol and uh, without alcohol and the number of officers and supervisors. Um, well, the fire marshal came back out, took a look. They have they've kind of split it up. Whether you've got standing room or seating, uh, seating, how many the building can hold. Again, hopefully we've just clarified that and simplified that process as well. For the other fees, there have been no changes. So um, again, just even on that first page, it wasn't that we had changed. We kind of compiled everything. So those were the changes. I only went over the changes that we have for next year. Hopefully we're making clarifications. And in one case, we've actually have a, an additional program to offer our residents. And we're excited about what that brings. And we think we're going to be able to have some tournaments out there. So Parks and Rec's already very excited about that. And that's what we have. Again, we will be bringing that back for a public hearing and a vote and ask that if you look at that, uh, look through those schedule, and if you have any questions, so please let us know. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Ms. Potter? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Item number 11 is update my board committee. Um, we'll start with the Mayor Pro Tem Luke, the Triangle J Council of Government. I was unable to attend the, uh, the last meeting of the Triangle J Council of Government due to a family conflict, um, but during that time they did a presentation of the budget for next year, similar to tonight, and a uh, presentation of the 2016-17 uh, uh, annual report. Thank you. Uh, fire Board, Commissioner Joyner. The uh, Fire Board meeting has been moved to next week. Okay. I think the um, Triangle J Council of Government mayors and regional mayors and chairs meeting, and it was about um, the program was about dementia and how it impacts communities, their growth, their finances, their downtown, things like that. Um, there are a lot of towns now that are uh, trying to become dementia friendly. They have, and in Wake Forest specifically, they've been doing this and they have training offered and so forth for businesses so that um, should someone come in that's struggling or with their caregiver, that their business can um, more quickly and gently assist them to help their shopping or their outing experience be good. Um, item number 12 is Commissioner's report. Start with Commissioner Joyner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I didn't want to speak on this earlier. I want to speak to it now, and I'm, I'm sure I'll say it again as we go through this process. Uh, the budget that we just saw um, is a good budget. Uh, Commissioner Boyette spoke to the increases that are going to be used across the board from personnel to capital outlay to a variety of different things. I commend uh, the manager and uh, Mr. K in working uh, to put this together to bring us a, a budget that does not have an effect on the tax rate um, straight out of the gate that allows us to fine tune on things a lot better moving forward. Also got to attend uh, expressions of worship, the dance recital up in uh, Young Lewisburg, Lewisburg um, this past weekend. Got to see all the Commissioner's daughters uh, dancing uh, it was a it was a good experience, and it was the first time that my daughter and I got to go out uh, in public. So that was uh, was good. She slept all the time; no problems there. We were good to go. Um, and I want to touch on one other thing uh, that everyone in the room plays a, a particular role. Uh, I got in the car that day to ride up to go see the dance, uh, and one of our friends that was with me said, "Hey." I just want to let you know this just happened. Uh, there are a few people that have had as profound of an impact on my life uh, as Mark Binker, uh, formerly an investigative reporter with WRAL, later with the News and Observer. Uh, Mark was the master of his craft, uh, knew how to write a story well, uh, knew how to insult you and come back the next day and write a glowing reflection on your character. Uh, I think Senator Berger paid him the biggest respect could by saying 15 years of working with him I, I never knew him. Mark did a service and I, Mark did a service to the state but he did a service to this town. Um, he was dogged in dealing with county commissioners and local boards and always searched for the truth uh, and, and I would be remiss tonight if I didn't uh, just mention that the, the impact that he's had on on our community uh, but mostly the, the loss the state will feel because of Mark no longer being here uh, at the age of 43. Commissioner Boyette. Still coming. Commissioner Myrick. Uh, I was able to attend the National Day of Prayer held at Town Square and just want to thank the Wendell Council of Churches for uh, hosting those two events. Um, also attended Public Safety Day this past Saturday held at Wendell. A great event. So thank you all the town staff, uh, Chief, for, for planning that. And just wanted to say thank you to town staff who's worked so hard on the budget and bringing us a balanced budget. I know you guys had to get creative, and, and we expected a lot. We didn't give everybody what they wished for, but you know the town is heading in the right direction as far as the tax base. So hopefully, in the near future, the wish list will you know come true a little bit more often than they are now. May I approve him? Not tonight. Commissioner Carroll. I'd also like to speak um, on for our finance department and congratulate them on the award received. Um, that's quite an accomplishment. And 
five percent of the uh, departments nationwide. So that congratulations again, and uh, thank you for your hard work there. Also, like to say thank you for bringing us a um, balanced budget, and um, I'm excited, personally excited, to say that we can hold the line two years in a row without raising taxes. Last year, uh, you know, it was <laughs> it was definitely a fight. Um, and a lot of mixed emotions on that, and this year it was a little bit easier to swallow, and, and I hope that uh, in, the, in the future it becomes easier and easier, um, and uh, we just keep moving forward in the right direction. I'd also like to thank all of the applicants for the Citizens Boards. I know when I you know, applied for my first Citizens Board, the town was all but begging folks just a couple of years ago, and uh, now the things are moving, and a lot of enthusiasm and new faces around town it seems that uh, people are ready to get involved and uh, that, I think that's great um, and if it's not too much to ask I'd like that to ask staff to send a letter just something brief to all of the applicants um, okay great okay great um, and other than that that's it okay I uh, last week attended the spring fling at Wendell Elementary School. The new principal invited me to be there. It was another opportunity that I had to be around him. He really had big shoes to fill, but it looks great so far. Um, Mr. Zellmer, he's I'm very fond of him, and I think he's going to do a great job there with all of our kids. Uh, it was a fun, fun day, and if next year I hope that you'll go because it was a fun day. Um, I also have met with the other mayors and community stakeholders with um, Dr. Ed McFarlane, who is the superintendent for the eastern part of Wake County, the Wake County Public Schools superintendent for the eastern part of Wake County. And he is working, and has been for a couple of years, to find, to develop a support group for this area. Um, what he's looking to do is get a group that eventually the school system steps back from and it kind of runs itself, and it will provide volunteer support for schools. Um, reading proctors and things like that, financial support in forms of fundraising and grants, and um, the money would be used to provide slides, supplies, student opportunities, professional development for teachers, and just take our schools up a few notches. This has been done in other areas of Wake County and North Carolina, and they've been highly successful, so I'm excited about the opportunity for that for our students here um, in Wendell and Eastern Wake County. Um, I also attended the National Day of Prayer. It was a lovely service. I went to the <coughs> evening one. I had a commitment that morning in Wake Forest. Uh, I do want to thank the Council of Churches for putting that on and the town staff for helping get it moved when it started raining. <laughs> so we had it in here. It was a kind of semi-last-minute move, but I appreciate their effort doing that. Um, Public Safety Day was this past weekend. Thanks to the police, fire, EMS, public um, works. The area police and highway patrol in other communities were all here, and um, I couldn't get any of them to promise not to give me a ticket or anything. I really, I tried, especially the highway patrolman, and he just wouldn't. So uh, he said he got that a lot from people. I've been trying to schmooze them, I guess. Anyhow, I appreciate them being here. Every time I turned around, they were talking to little kids and giving them little armbands and stickers and color and things, and it's always nice for... Um, children to be able to be around folks like that, look inside the cars and things like that. It's a wonderful opportunity for them. We also had a lot of children sign up for Camp Choices here in Wendell, which is great. You can still sign up for that um, by contacting the police department. And there might be, is there a link on Facebook for that or on the website? Okay. Okay. But it's a great time because in the summer. Kids have a wonderful time. So if you're considering that, I urge you to sign up for that with your child. And do, with that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Madam Mayor. Yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn in memory of uh, WRO reporter Mark Binker. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're adjourned. <laughs>